Hi Figmates, welcome back to Figma Atelier. So today we'll make a walkthrough of my latest experiment that I've done on the Figma community. Some people from Reddit and Twitter wanted to know some technique that I was using inside my experiment. So we'll start first with portrait and collage and I will try to explain how I animated the mask here. Then we'll go through V and I will try to explain how I animated the light directly on the face of V and the electricity here on the gloves. Then we'll go through Scanimation. I'll try to explain how I animated the auto layout and use the technique of animation created by Rufus Butler Seder. And then we'll finish with Mecha Woman and I'll try to explain how I combine all these techniques to create this experiment. But let's start with Portrait and Collage. So let's start with this first experiment here. So with this experiment, what I wanted to do is to play with the mouse, right? And what I've done here is that every time you move your mouse around, it reveals the photo collage behind. So there is three main layers here. We have first transparent GIF animation with a noisy effect that I made inside After Effects. Then we have the portrait of this woman here. And then we have the photo collage that I made inside Photoshop with different textures. But let's go inside the file so we can see it with better what I've done here. So as you can see here in this file, uh, we have like uh, many different frames. So here we have the two main one. Go to it. So we have the portrait picture uh, of uh, this woman taken by Mitro Tolkanov. Only thing that I've done here is uh, I just uh, make it a bit darker and play with the contrast inside Photoshop. And uh, actually, it's a PNG, and behind the background, we have a black background. And uh, we have also a noisy texture. And on the other side, we have other components. And here is like the photo collage that I created uh, inside uh, Photoshop with uh, many different textures here. I will not go uh, inside the Photoshop file, but uh, just to show the process of uh, how I make it interactive. And then here we have the prototype. So that's uh, where everything happened. So on the layer here, we have an instance of uh, the portrait picture here. Then we have invisible button here made of different row and each inside sorry each row we have a cell okay and each cells here when you go to prototype we have here an interaction so when we go to mouse enter and we use a smart animate one second we go to another frame huh? and each cells go to different frame here. Okay, so every time I enter an area zone inside the cell, I go to a different frame here with my center. And if I go there on the, this one here, on the frame 13, it reveals a part of the photo collage here and they are all connected i keep the interaction here layer so it's an instance the main component is on the prototype one that uh, we have seen previously and with the mask here just reveal some part of it and i made that and i move the mask around in all different frame here Okay, and they are all connected, but for that it's just instance of the main component interaction. So it's simple as that, and that's how you reveal the photo collage behind. It's really simple. Uh, it just uh, it just uh, it's a bit uh, complex to create at the start because you have uh, to create like uh, and to understand that you have to create many many different frames. So it's just that, and uh, yeah, that's it for. This experiment, simple as that. 
So let's go to the next experiment and we'll go through V. So with this experiment uh, of V that we have been inspired by Forti Studio, I created that with a Twitch streamer called Anatole Ayadi. And we made uh, the illustration of V and tried to uh, animate it uh, a bit later. So we have several things here. We have uh, on the foreground a particle effect and also a noisy effect created directly inside After Effects. And then we make it uh, transparent uh, on top of the face of V. We have an animation uh, on the foreground also of the electricity on the glove, the shoulder of V are moving, and also different parts of the air of V are moving. Behind, we have a light here, a beam light that uh, is on the background that is moving across the frame. We have also, when we move around, it's the same principle as before on the other uh, experiments, that when we move around, the eyes are following uh, the, um, the mouse. And that was the same principle also that I use uh, in uh, things experiments. But here, what I add also is that um, there is a pinky light and so layer mode effects that go across the frame. And when you move around, it's following also the cursor. So we have two things that are following the cursor. Um, for the electricity on the gloves, um, I've done that also inside uh, directly uh, Figma. And But uh, yeah, to explain it a bit better, let's go inside directly the file. So for this experiment of V, we have uh, several frames here. Uh, I will show you a bit uh, each of them. Um, the first one, we have the original uh, illustration here from uh, Forti Studio. Then we have the master here uh, of uh, V. So that's uh, actually the illustration that I uh, created with uh, Anatole. Then uh, we have this one, but it's not really important. That's just introduction to show a bit uh, our name and uh, just introduction. And then we have the prototype here uh, with all the interaction. Um, and on the side, we have the main component of the different parts of the illustration and uh, also of the animation. But let's go first inside the master of the illustration. So here on the master, so here, let's open it. We have several, uh, sorry, several uh, instances. So we have first, uh, I didn't show it, but uh, we have the light here effect, the pinky light effect. Then we have the right gauntlet here, but I will first remove the background because it's not in the same frame. Uh, so we have the right gauntlet here, and it's made of a lot of different uh, layer and vectors. Uh, then we have the hair here also, so like that. We have the eyes, we have the face, and we have the vest of the here. Uh, so actually this one are just instances. I will show it a bit uh, uh, where are the main components a bit later. Um, here are, is the prototype. So that's where the interaction and all the different effects happen. So we have first uh, on the foreground here, we have the noisy and particle effects. So they are just transparent uh, if here, you can see. Like that with different uh, layer mode. Uh, then we have the light effect as before, so the pinky one, and then we have also uh, the electricity on the gloves, so also instances, eye hair, face, gauntlet, and vest. That's for V. And then behind we have the background where we have also the animation of the light beam. So I will show you that also a bit later. And if we go to the main components here, I will create some layer because there is many of them. Um, we'll start with the main components with different variants here of the electricity. So that's the uh, electricity effect on the glove. So what I've done here is that I took some reference from anime uh, and uh, I tried to replicate, replicate sorry, 
uh, some uh, layer, uh, some uh, sorry, electricity uh, effect. So it was uh, something that I've never done before, so it was interesting. And um, what happened is that uh, there is several steps, and what I've done in terms of interaction is that every time uh, we go to uh, the next uh, step, so the second, third, fourth, and fifth and sixth step, step I use an after delay and change to the another step, and the animation is directly in instant just to create uh, uh, the animation and go like that. And then at the end, it loop back uh, with an after delay of one second uh, to the first frame. So that's how I make I make it loop. For the eyes, uh, I use the same principle that I use uh, with the Jinx experiment and also the previous uh, experiment, photo collage. Uh, I create different cells, and each cell is actually connected to other frames. So when, when you go with a mouse center, it changes to another frame with a smart animate. So they are all there. And what I done here is that every time the eyes are moving to a different place, um, the eyeball, so like from at the bottom, here on the side, and like that. And there is different uh, cells on each um, of these uh, frames. And yeah, that's how I make the animation on the mouse following of the eye. Uh, the face here, the only thing that I've done here is that I create a small animation of the mouse. So it just moves really slightly. Um, so. I will not go a bit deeper into it, but uh, I can show you with just an after delay, a smart animate and 100 milliseconds. So just in two step and it loop also. With the air, uh, I use the same principle also as uh, I've done with um, the Jinx experiment, but I just made that in two step. So what I've done here is that uh, I had to separate some part of the air here. Um, so they are all separated. Uh, I can uh, show you like that. And instead of, I use the same principle here as uh, I done in Jinx, I use anchor points and I just make a small rotation of some part of the air on the second uh, frame here, on the second step, and it loop. So it's just moving a little bit slightly also. But just to give a little bit of uh, the wind uh, movement. Uh, the air and for the vest i just rotate the frame just to have the movement of the shoulder so simple as that i will not go into into it uh, for the gauntlet uh, right and left same thing a little uh, rotation so ooh, as you can see here is, there is no rotation and when you go there inside the file actually not directly on the frame so directly on the on the gauntlet uh, frame here, there is a slight uh, rotation here of five degrees, so something really uh, tiny, just to have a slight uh, movement. Um, for the pinky lights, in principle, as the eyes uh, ball uh, following the cursor, so we have uh, something different cells, and every time the mouse enter the cells, the uh, light actually is following the cursor, so it's really simple as that. So it's a principle that you can use uh, when you want to animate um, a gradient or uh, a light inside an interface that uh, could be interesting. So like that, and I had to create a more step here for this uh, this one. Um, for the background, uh, what happens that uh, we just have here uh, behind the light. So that is on the side here, and when what happens is that it's moving through the frame like that. Okay, so first it's on this side on the, this uh, first step. Then I use again an after delay, one millisecond, and I use a smart animate. And because I wanted to make it uh, really slow, uh, I use a smart animate of ten seconds, and then it looped back uh, through the first. Uh, but uh, for that, uh, I just use instant, so it doesn't uh, the light doesn't go back uh, directly uh, on the other side. It's a bit weird. And 
yeah, I think that's it for this experiment uh, of V. Uh, try to make it a bit quick. Um, if you have any question, don't hesitate uh, to put that inside uh, the comments on YouTube, or you can also uh, send me a message on Twitter if you are following me. Don't hesitate. Um, so yeah, that's it. So let's go to the other uh, experiment, Scanimation, if you want to. And uh, yeah, let's do that. So here for Scanimation, uh, what I've done is that I've been inspired by some work of uh, Rufus uh, Butler Seder. And I try to play with uh, the auto layout. And also we have like a drag button here. So when we move uh, this button here, we have actually an animation that is created here. So it's a really a simple uh, animation, the fox running, and the auto layout behind, like here, the different lines are actually moving, and that gives the animation of the fox here. But uh, let's go inside the file so I can explain a bit uh, what happened here. So for this experiment, it's a little bit. Uh, uh, more complex. It seems simple like that because we have just two frames, but actually in each frame uh, we have the different step of the animation of the fox, and I had to do a little bit of math uh, to create the animation. So I will show you the interface okay, like that. So when we go to the first frame here. Um, like that. It's, so we have several layers. Here we have the button, just a drag button here. Uh, a vignette that just give a, a light uh, effect. Uh, some texture, but that's not really important. What uh, is really important is what happened in animation. So I reactivated that to show you. So here we have uh, first on the here we have the mask. Uh, it's just uh, uh, an auto layout of different rectangles, different lines, kind of. And the uh, animation is that I move the, the layout across the frame to create uh, the animation. Okay? So, what I've done is that for that, we have different step of the animation. And I will remove all of them. So we have the illustration that is actually here. And that's represent each step of the animation of the fox. And I had to create a reverse mask here to create lines like that, okay, on the illustration. And what happened is that I had to move for the illustration and the mask here, I had to move that from uh, two pixels each time. So I've done that on this step here, on this one, on this one, on this one, and the last one, this one. And when they are all activated, looks like that. It weird. Um, and when I activate the mask here, you see the first frame okay and then if i remove uh, if i remember is one it's uh it start with uh, the six pixels i think so yeah is this one um and when i move around activate all the thing i move around this mask if the idea of animation okay but we show just one frame at the time of the animation of uh, the step of animation here. And what happened, the only thing that I've moved around here, that's when you take this button and when you move that around on the other side, on the second frame, actually move just the mask behind, just this layer here. So this one here. Okay here. So it seems to be simple um, like that, but uh, it's a bit complex because you have to do a little bit of math. It's just that 
when you understand the principle of uh, this, uh, how it works, after that, uh, it's pretty simple. You can, uh, you can replace uh, any uh, illustration behind. You just have to create a six step here. And if you create uh, another step, a bit more complex because you have to change all the value here. Not three pixels, it will change to perhaps four pixels, five pixels. And you have to do the same thing here for the rectangles. Um, for example, like the size of the rectangle is 15 here in terms of width. And uh, if you change uh, just a new add, sorry, one uh, other step, you have to change all the value. So yeah, it's a bit of math, but uh, it's, uh, it's pretty simple, but uh, just have to understand. So yeah, that's it for this uh, experiment. Uh, let's go to the last one, uh, Make a Woman. And uh, yeah, we'll go a little bit deeper into this one. With this Make a Woman experiment, I use all the different principles and technique that I've done uh, with my previous experiments. Try to combine them into one, kind of, uh, just to see if uh, Figma can uh, do it. And yeah, it works, even my uh, GPU is not happy about it. Perhaps you can hear it uh, in my mic. Um, so what happened here, there are several layers. We have first layer uh, particle um, GIF uh, and also a noise uh, GIF in transparent mode. Uh, then we have also a glitch effect on the background. We have some texture. We have an animation of the different circles here um, that are in auto layout that are actually animated directly inside Figma. We have also the animation of the title here in Japanese that just say magic. That, uh, go across the frame. We have uh, the portrait of this Mecha woman that has been done by Yugal Odrani. I didn't have the time to create uh, my own illustration for this one. It was just a quick experiment. And uh, yeah, I play also with the light. Uh, as you can see, light are moving. The red light from is moving around the face of uh, this Mecha woman. Then we have, when I go across uh, the make a woman. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I have played with uh, the auto layout again, uh, but to give uh, a new kind of aberration effect, you can see more on this one, aberration effect here. Uh, there is different layer mode. Um, so yeah, it's pretty heavy fire. Uh, your CPU will not be happy if you open it, but uh, uh, just a prototype, but uh, it was quite interesting. Um, but let's go inside the file so we can see a bit uh, deeper what I've done uh, on this one. On this file, we have a different uh, frame again. Um, on the first frame here, we have the Mecha Woman, so it's just a PNG. And you can replace any image here uh, if you want to when you will open this file uh, inside the Figma community and find it. Um, then we have here the auto layout animation here, and I will try to explain it a bit later. We have the prototype here, the color effect animation here of the light, the blue and red light. Here is uh, the image overlapping with different uh, mode, uh, and when you click on it, it changes to another. We have here the animation of the circles also in auto layout. Here we have the offset effect of the different circles here like that like you can see uh, here on the face of the mecha woman here really uh, soft um then we have the text animation so we don't see it here because it's just uh, on one side and on the other side uh, we have the glitch animation here and we have uh, the lozenge texture also that I recreate inside the Figma. But let's start with the first one. So go to layout. What happened here? The background. So we'll close some here. So here we have actually uh, 96 uh, variant. And what happens is that inside each variant, we have an instance of this image here. And on each um, variant, uh, I move the background to uh, 40 pixels to the left. 
on each one like that. And what happened in terms of interaction is that when you go the first one, when you go on the first one, you have uh, when you go on over, uh, you go to the second uh, frame or the second uh, story variant, and then you have a smart animate that I make it custom with uh, 150 uh, milliseconds, and I done that not for each frame because uh, it's just two by two. And uh, what happens is that when I move the auto when I go on over on the face of this Mecha Woman, uh, what happens is that it just moves to the second frame. So that gives uh, just movement and the aberration effect like that. Uh, so if you go to the prototype, like that, I will open it. So we have like all the effects on the top of it, all the light effects. I'm not going to it, but uh, we have the dust, uh, noise, the vignette, and uh, color animation here. Uh, and uh, when you go inside this image, so it's already just an image, we have all the texture that I showed you before. So the offset, so it's an instance. Uh, the image overlapping also here. Uh, so it's also an instance. And we have also shadow also uh, of the Mecha Woman here uh, inside it. And it's actually just a PNG uh, image here. And uh, what happened is that inside, uh, um, Right ways um, inside this one. So here we have all the different um, uh, variants and instance uh, of the image. And uh, when you are not on it, actually, it's, it looks normal. But if I close just one here or this one, it remove uh, it just remove uh, one uh, part of the image. So yeah, that's how I play with the auto layout. It's just like each rectangle here are a part actually of uh, this thing here. And so actually this image here. So it looks a bit weird when you are on this uh, background because uh, it looks extended. But uh, when you close the gap between uh, each frame, actually it looks uh, normal. And uh, that's how I made the animation of the auto layout and the aberration effects. Close that. Uh, we we'll activate all the layer here. And uh, for the instance of the color effect animation, so what I've done, it's uh, pretty simple. Uh, it's just two frames, uh, one uh, blue, one red. And inside it, it's really it's uh, just a radial here. Radial gradient, and uh, when it go to the other frame here, it uh, change color, and it change uh, the placement of the radial here. Actually, it change color to uh, blue to red, but also it move around, right? So you can animate uh, the radial here on the gradients. And uh, for that, I just use uh, for the reaction just an after delay, and uh, to make it uh, a bit soft. It, uh, two seconds uh, here and custom. Um, so yeah, that's how you animate uh, the light. And after that, when you go back to the prototype, so the light is uh, here, the light effect animation, and I put the mode lighten, right? So lighten mode, really how you can play with the light effect on an image. Uh, for the image overlapping, so here in the prototype, we have also that. We have also, if I remember here, the image overlapping. So that is put into difference uh, mode here. So if I remove it, uh, we just see it slightly. So it just uh, go down to yellow to uh, something a bit more bluish. And that's a different mode that actually here. This variant here, this uh, main component, we have different variants. And each time I click on the frame, it changes to another step. And so also another uh, uh, layer mode. So here, when you go inside uh, this one, 
uh, I just uh, put a different effect on it. And we have still the image here, so the instance of the main image, and a mask uh, just uh, to uh, apply the color effect only on the PNG and not across all the frame, right? And I've done that for each of them. And I change here for the second variant to another color effect, like there in multiply. Here it was in overlay, in a red, uh, in a red color. And here it was back to a red color, but it is another layer mode in color. So each time you click on it, on one uh, variant here, uh, you go across them and uh, then it loops back to the first one. And after that, when uh, you have this image here, you create an instance and you put that inside the main prototype and you put that in different mode. And that's how I play with the different uh, layer mode here. Uh, there is also the offset here uh, on top of the face of uh, Mecha Woman. Uh, just an instance, I did not animate it because it was too much for Figma. Uh, and when you combine all them all, it looks like that, right? For the, for the color effect animation here and uh, for the image overlapping here. Uh, for the background, so here, in the background we have the circles, the texture and also the glitch effect and also the uh, animation of the uh, title in Japanese. So for here, what happens is that uh, I just create for these uh, circles uh, an auto layout with different row. Okay, here they are like that. And what happened is that I just uh, so it's uh, just different row with inside uh, different circles. And I create the circles, uh, but perhaps at some point I wanted to change it, so I just create uh, that inside another component. And after that, I, I took the instance of the component and. Uh, that inside the uh, row and did that uh, many times so we have kind of a pattern here so to animate it uh, what i've done is that uh, uh, there are like uh, there is a spacing uh, between uh, the different uh, circles of 40 here and on the second one it's the same right but uh, to make the animation what i've done is that i change the value here at the start okay so here it's in uh, for some row Okay, so if you go inside uh, animation, I can remember it. No, it's not there, it's inside here, it's animation. So on the first uh, layer, if we take uh, this row here, uh, it's in zero pixels. The second one starts at 40, so it just creates like a, uh, this pattern. And if I go to the second frame here, second, uh, sorry, uh, variant, it really uh, changed the value. So for the last one, and it's here, sorry. Uh, it's in 40. So first it was in uh, zero. It start at, uh, start at uh, zero here. And then when you go move to the other one, 40, okay? And I create that for each one of them. So I change the value to zero to 40 and 40 to zero. Uh, to create like the movement of the different circles. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one. So the interaction is just a simple after delay uh, like that and two seconds and a custom uh, curve here uh, for the animation. Um, so that's not animated as I showed you before. It's just uh, an offset uh, pattern. And after that, I just put that in a, in a different mode inside the prototype uh, uh, frame. For the text here, what happened, it just go across, uh, across like uh, the, the frame. So it starts here, then it go to the, start to the right and go to the left. Simple as that, nothing special here. And same principle of interaction here, just an after the of one milliseconds and, uh, and go to the second one. I actually start with this one, sorry, one millisecond and uh, in six seconds, uh, not animate, you go to this frame here, and after that, you go back there directly in instant animation here. Uh, for the glitch here, <coughs> uh, I didn't want it to repeat all the time, so what happened is that I just uh, put uh, zero opacity uh, in the second uh, frame here, and uh, actually, it plays here for, if I remember, if I go to prototype. Uh, just for yeah, 
1040 milliseconds, one, oh, sorry, 1400 milliseconds, and then in, go instantly to the second frame. And here, uh, the layer is actually just in a zero uh, opacity. So just so you cannot see anything. And then it goes back to, to this one. So it just uh, not have like the glitch effect all the time that uh, pop up. Um, and then uh, the last uh, thing here is that we have the lozenge uh, here um, that I recreate. So it's just an auto layout, if I remember, of many different uh, lozenges. And uh, yeah, that's how it looks like. So many of them. So that's how you can create a texture or a pattern inside a Figma. Um, what happened else? So after that, yeah, when you go with all the different uh, layer and animation here, I combine them inside the prototype here. Prototype uh, uh, layer. Try to close some of the things because there's too many things happening here. Uh, so it's here. So if I close uh, and I just keep like the background here, the background we have, or try to close everything so you can see a bit better what happened here. Uh, and up, per G animation so uh, first we have the circle animation here then we have the text animation of the Japanese uh, text that, that go sorry the text animation that go across uh, the frame then we have the grungy effect here uh, that is put in a different mode also uh, the text animation is put also if I remember perhaps not no there is nothing it's just uh, the animation here uh, then we have the paper uh, here, so kind of a grungy paper that is put in screen mode. Then we have the lozenge uh, pattern that I've done that is put also in difference mode. And then we have another texture here of grungy uh, texture. And then the last thing we have the glitch animation that is uh, there. And uh, yeah, and after that I combine everything together. And that's it. That's how it looks like uh, at the end. Uh, the GPU is not happy, but uh, I need to do, uh, and I hope you you liked it. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, uh, I've gone uh, through all the different experiments that I've done uh, lately, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And uh, and uh, yeah, uh, don't hesitate to follow me on the Figma community or on Twitter if you want to. And uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to put that inside the comments and to subscribe to my channel, of course, if you want to also. And yeah, so see you next time. Bye.